Good morning, beautiful people. How's it going? How you doing? Welcome back. So nice to see you. I hope you have your coffee. We're obviously talking about Gilmore Girls today, so let's get started. I'm completely jazzed. When it comes to Gilmore Girls, there is definitely a lot that we could talk about, but today the main thing that I want to talk about and have us focus on are some core learning moments that I had throughout the show. Now, I have been watching the show for literally 20 years this year, which is just crazy to think about. Oh, for God's sake, do we have to go through this every damn year? Why don't you go stand in line for toilet paper? Our sense of community is so important, isn't it? It's what made our country great. But here are some things that I really have taken away over the years from the show. The first thing I learned is that love is messy. Now that's not just romantic love, but that's love from your friends and also your family. There are things that will happen that it's hard to move forward from. You can feel like you're losing somebody, so you want to buy a plane if you have that money, which I do not. But also it makes you want to build a hoopah for somebody or build them an ice skating rink because you just I'd like to see you happy. There's different levels of love and knowing that it's messy is definitely an important thing to take into any argument. I love you, mom. Oh, kid, you have no idea. You want to make sure that somebody that you love knows that you love them before the last episode. That's really depressing. Keep moving, sister. It's also important to take in those moments of people that you love showing you kindness. People that you love being willing to be kind of your band manager and coming out of the woodwork, somebody that you were nervous to go to, kind of stepping up for you. Taking those moments into consideration throughout life and realizing that they kind of they kind of flow throughout it is one of my favorite things that I learned from the show. Second, I learned you can't put a check mark on having life figured out. There are many different seasons in life and your priorities still need to bite need to be your priorities, but somewhere along the way, Kirk is going to come crashing through your window and it's up to you to kind of look at that moment and pick up the pieces. I loved throughout the show how we watched not only Rory and Lorelai, but all of the characters grow and mature and develop and deepen. Some of those relationships became stronger, some of them ended up disappearing, but throughout all of their lives, there are moments that it's not a check mark. It's not something where you you know exactly what's going to happen and, and it never really becomes that. The experiences that you have in high school, college, or in your career are some that end up shaping you, but also you never know where they'll lead you. So if somebody comes and they pin something on your dorm room, uh, you never know who that person could end up being. Coffee, coffee, coffee. Coffee is truly the lifeblood, I feel like, of every week. I personally have won two cups pretty much every day, um, and I have done that for years. Junkie. Angel, you've got wings, baby. A really good cup of coffee, I've learned, has the potential to bring friends together. It has the potential to keep you sane, or maybe have you go insane when you run out of coffee, when you're in a snowstorm, and you start pouring all everybody else's cups into one cup. No, no, no. Give me that. No, no. get away. No. Don't you understand? If I don't get coffee in me, things are gonna get ugly around here. I understand that type of desperation 100%. Also, throughout looking at the show, and throughout my life as well, I kind of went from very sweet type of coffees to literally drinking black coffee. And that's something that I noticed that they really don't add a lot of cream and sugar or anything like that into their coffees throughout their time. And at first that tasted gross, but the more you do it, and having worked in the hospitality industry, just needing to get coffee into your system, I 100% agree. Black coffee is the way to go. But also, bonus tip is um, definitely have more vitamin C and drink more water than she does, specifically Lorelai does, because there's no way that she wouldn't have gotten sick from coming into contact with that many people in the hospitality industry. She would have had to drink more water than she did on the show. Um, and also, they eat a lot of fries. So that's just coffee and fries, I will take it. The fourth thing I learned is to talk fast, but to listen well. It's okay to talk fast, but you should also listen. Now going back to the fact that these characters were developed throughout the show, one thing that even my favorite favorite character Lorelai uh, I feel like does is sometimes she really doesn't listen that well and that hinders her relationships and hinders her communication uh, with those that she loves. One fun aspect of it that I did read is that after the show both Alexis Bledel and Lauren Graham 
had difficulties auditioning for, well not really difficulties, but when they would audition for future projects, they would always get told to speak slower because the scripts for Gilmore Girls were so long they would have to speak a lot quicker. And for personal experience and being in like drama clubs in high school, that was the number one thing people would always tell me was to talk slower. And even when I get tired, I don't really talk slow, I just end up slurring my words and thinking I'm saying words that aren't there. So I definitely talk fast and I think that partially has to do with something else as well. Don't let the what ifs take over. If you have a goal in mind and you want to do it, just do it. Now we may not all have grandparents and the knowledge of the family money backing us to get us through Ivy Leagues and schools like that, but watching Lorelai and Suki long for years and years to really want to have that in and then seeing them go for it and seeing them succeed in it and seeing them partially fail in it um, was something that was really inspiring to me. I remember particularly the episode of Jackson sleeping with the zucchinis was one that looking back on and watching over and over it always hits me every single time because there's a moment in that where Lorelai talks about how we're gonna take something off our plates and this is supposed to be fun and this is supposed to be something that we do together and this has been our dream for so long so like basically like let's not lose that aspect of it and for me um, I will really dive into projects and I don't want the what ifs to take over and I don't want the fear of XYZ to take over. So that's always been a really good reminder for me. And remember, if you fail, it will be the most exciting six months of your lives, AKA a quote from the show, but just try it. And don't let the haters, <coughs> Mitch and Hans Weger, <coughs> get you down because could have skipped that gap year. You know what I'm saying? you can always add to your family. Despite the Mitchum Huntsburgers of the world out there being haters, there are people out there that really want you to succeed and your, your close friends and family, like Suki and Lorelai and Lane and Rory, nobody can tell me that they are not family because I have people in my life that have poured into me and I've been able to pour into them. You speak life over each other and they really do become your family. Friendship is hard, especially when you're in college and your friend is off working on her band and going on trips uh, with her band. But if there's two people that are willing to work at a relationship, you can make it through difficult times. And you can also make it through times where you don't understand the decision of one of your friends, but you support them, but you still speak your truth, which I thought was a really good um, thing that we learned from Paris and Rory when Rory does have that gap year. Paris doesn't understand it, she speaks her truth, and then she's still there to support. You can always recreate yourself. Now whether you liked or didn't like the reboot, whether you felt it was interesting, it went against characters, um, I would love to know. But one thing that I really appreciated is that Emily had the opportunity to re-find herself, if that's a way to say that. Um, I can only imagine and don't want to for a very, very long time, but losing somebody that you've loved for years and years, um, she got to find a new spark and a new moment and uh, new love in a different way. And I really appreciate that at every stage throughout the series that characters were given the opportunity to grow and to learn. And I think that we're given that opportunity as well. I think that throughout life there are moments and there are changes and there are moves and there are marriages and there are friends and bands and trips across the ocean and we can recreate ourselves in those. There are many, many, many more things that I have learned um, from Gilmore Girls throughout the years. I already knew this, but uh, don't wear bucket hats. Don't do that. It was a one-time thing and we all know it, but uh, pink trench coats, I would still love that trench coat, 100%, 100%. I also have personally bought a jacket because they wore it in season one and two and I friggin love that jacket. So there are so many things that I could talk about more throughout this, but those are the main things that I've learned throughout the show. Um, and I would love to know what you've learned. I would love to know if you have a different show that's really impacted your life, 
but it's really interesting how over the last literally 20 years, this show has been in our lives. Please comment below. If you like this, let me know. I'm gonna do another video uh, soon about Gilmore Girls because we should celebrate it. And it's fun and it's not dead and I love it. So hope you have a great day. <laughs> Bye.